Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. As the scripture says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. And as the scripture says, Let us enter in his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. And I truly thank God and praise God for all that he is and all that he's doing. And I thank him also, too, for an opportunity uh, at work. People asking me about Jesus, and I get excited when that happens, you know, asking about prayer. And I put one, put one, uh, one of the correction officers on hold. She wanted to talk to me about the Lord. And I said, well, I, I can't talk right now. I got to get this paperwork done. <laughs> she, said, she said, later? I said, yeah, we talk later. <laughs> so I'm going to certainly follow up. Thank you, Lord, because it's good to talk about Jesus. It's good to talk about the Lord. And um, it's good that people are interested. Amen. And so I thank God for the interest. Uh, so we want to certainly go before the Lord in prayer. And um, we want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. We live in uh, truly in the last days, and um, if people ain't caught on to that by now, then there's something wrong, you know, <laughs> because the things that are going on now, uh, 20 years ago, wasn't happening, you know, things that are going on now in this time, in this, time, in this season, uh, uh, things weren't happening then, it's getting worse, and as the Bible has proclaimed that the love of many shall wax worse. It should get cold. So um, let us pray uh, for this world. Let us pray for even our own hearts and our minds that we ourselves will cleave unto the Lord. Notice with a purpose yeah. in heart. Yeah. You got to cleave with a purpose. Because if you don't cleave, you cleave without a purpose, then anything can take you away. You know, but if you got a purpose and you know what that purpose is and you're cleaving, it gives it meaning. Yeah. It gives it meaning. I don't. I don't particularly care for the song that says, uh, "There's a storm out over the ocean, <laughs> and it's moving this whole way." But it's a true song. Yeah. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, yes. it will surely drift away. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So let us be mindful of that, and let us be mindful of the Bible study on tonight. There's something be said and done to encourage and to inspire our hearts. And um, let us uh, remember, as, as um, uh, those that are uh, in leadership position, uh, not only in the world, but also in the church. Uh, any uh, other prayer requests? Continue praying for our children that have health issues. Yes. And continue praying for Sister Stephanie Stein. Yes, 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 Jamil. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I just want to ask for prayer for the children that um, are on the you know, they have addictions. Yes. You know, I want to pray for all the children in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I say children, but they're adults. Yes. You know, I want to pray for them. You know, yes. there's a lot of times those that have addictions, their teenagers. Absolutely. You know, they start having addictions because they get into the stuff that their parents have. You know, Absolutely. Pray for all of them because I know that's a struggle. It's a struggle. Yes. Yes. Pray for addictions and things mm -hmm. such as that. All right. We'd like to ask the church to stand. Thank you, Lord. Let every heart pray, oh gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We certainly say thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known to you, Lord. Remember men and women and children of all walks of life, those that are sick and afflicted and going through in their bodies, those that are dealing with addictions, Lord. We ask that you send forth deliverance, that you send forth healing. And Lord, bless us with a mindset to cleave unto you, Lord, with a purpose and heart in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, that you strengthen each and every soul that is here on tonight and those that are under the sound of our voice and those that are virtual. We ask you, Lord, that you're blessed by your power, by your might, and through your Holy Ghost anointing. Lord, tear down every stronghold. Build us up, Lord. Encourage our hearts. 
especially as we see the day approaching. Hallelujah. Let us not be discouraged, but let us be encouraged, knowing that our redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. Lord, let us, hallelujah, Lord, let us do that which is needful and that you're calling for in these last and evil days. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. Bless our finances. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. <laughs> I had to put in there, bless our finance, because it said, you have not, because you ask not. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We praise God. We do. Thank you, Lord. And I would lift up the name of Jesus and give him glory and honor. Uh, on last week, uh, we had uh, finished uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number six, and ended up uh, with talking about uh, spiritual warfare and putting on the whole armor of God. And as I was seeking the Lord, I said, Lord, now, uh, what, what do you want to go into now? And, uh, and the Lord, Lord was letting me know uh, we ain't done with the spiritual warfare. We ain't done with uh, the armor of God. <laughs> so, uh, and, and he wants us at this moment in time to really focus in on uh, uh, that whole armor, that whole armor. Uh, so the Lord has really dealt with my mind and um, kind of with that put me in, into a, I don't want to say a new twist because there's nothing new under heaven, but uh, thank you, Holy Ghost, but has given me uh, some more insight, has revealed some things unto me. And I want to share those things that God has revealed unto me with you so that it may help us. Amen. And because one thing I realize is that um, all of these promises and, and things that God has blessed us with, our calling and our election, everything... Uh, doesn't, uh, it won't stand up or it can't be accomplished unless we put on this armor, right. unless we realize that we're in a fight mm -hmm. and know how to fight to, to accomplish the things that God has for us. Mm -hmm. Because God has given us some things, but uh, uh, you have to take them. God has made promises, but you have to live in such a way that these promises are realized in your life. Mm -hmm. And we have an adversary, we have a common foe that is always trying to attack us and to stop us mm -hmm. from, from achieving our goal. Mm -hmm. One thing that I realized that uh, you can't kill the devil. You know, the devil is, is, is gonna be around. If we could kill him, he'd already be dead. <laughs> he'd already be dead. So you can't kill him. So he's always going to be there opposing you. He's an accuser of the brother. So I want to go uh, uh, to, uh, I said, will you be my reader today? Uh, I want to go to, yes. I want to go to uh, uh, Genesis chapter number three. Genesis chapter number three. And I want to go to where it all began, <laughs> if you allow me to say it. Genesis deals with the book of beginnings. It's the book of beginnings. And I want to go where it began. Where it began. Genesis chapter number three. And realize that uh, we're in a, a spiritual warfare. We're in a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And God's desire is for us to put on that whole armor of God. And we have to realize that our battle is with Satan and also his followers. It's with Satan and his followers. I don't really want to uh, get into it much, but, you know, the Bible teaches us about uh, uh, possession, spiritual possession. Uh, Satan uh, is, is, he can't truly operate in this world, in this dimension, without inhabiting a body, whether it be 
a person's body or an animal's body. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? So, so that's how he can operate in this realm, in this dimension. And because God has given us dominion over this dimension, but we lost that dominion uh, through Adam and Eve. Follow me? So, so you know, uh, uh, spiritual possession is real. And if you, you know, if we were to really uh, drop it to the essence, uh, God possesses us through the Holy Ghost. That's spiritual possession. Amen. We have a hard time yielding to it. <laughs> if we, if we, uh, uh, help, help me here, Holy Ghost. If we would uh, yield to God's spirit as opposed to the enemy, as freely as we do the enemy's spirit, <laughs> we'd be further up the road. And we'd be further up the road. Amen. We'd be further up the road. <laughs> I never thought about it like that. But that's true. So, so possession is real. You remember when uh, Jesus, when he was uh, dealing with those legions, and he cast them out, and they got into the swine, and they ran headlong down into uh, the, the, the lake, mm -hmm. amen, and drowned. So that, I'm just letting you know that that's real. But Satan can't operate in this realm without possessing you know, being in. And our job is to keep him out. Amen? God's armor is designed to keep him out. So, let us look here. Um, Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 1. What does it say? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. All right, now I'm just trying to identify here the enemy, the, the devil. And this is the first time that he's really introduced in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And notice the language. He said the serpent. So he's calling him a serpent. And uh, we have the connotation as, as a serpent uh, being something wicked. Mm -hmm. Being something wicked. And notice how it says that the serpent was more subtle, uh, more, that word more than, uh, subtle than any beast of the field. So any foe that you would come up against, this is the connotation, that the devil is a formidable foe. Uh, he's a, a formidable foe that, is, that you would have to come up against. And that word subtle there means, uh, uh, it means sly. It means cunning. It means crafty. You know, and, and, I, and I want you to take what I'm about to teach here uh, to heart. You know, because uh, life and death uh, uh, hinges on it. Your spiritual success hinges on the, these couple Bible classes that we're going to teach in these next series of Bible study. So, so, so know your enemy. Know your enemy. He's sly. Uh, he's cunning. He's crafty. Uh, he's, he's, uh, this word subtle also means insinuating. Meaning that he insinuates. That word insinuates means that, that, that he, he uh, accuses you. He accuses you. And he's a false accuser. And that word uh, subtle also means adversary. The devil is your adversary. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't mean you any good. <laughs> Amen? He doesn't mean you any good at all. He hates you. He hates you. Uh, he's deceitful. And he's also treacherous. He's treacherous. You know, there's, there's level of treachery. There's levels, different levels of treachery. Child pornography is a different level of treachery than adult pornography. It's treacherous. It's treacherous. The devil is treacherous. Man, he's treacherous. Doesn't mean you any good. All right? Now notice what he says. The, uh, read that verse again. 
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field uh -huh. which the Lord God had made. Now notice, he's more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Read. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. Now notice, I don't, I don't want to, this, this here, this particular story, uh, I don't want to say story, this particular scriptures, uh, we know. We know we have gone over this, and people know what happened. That the enemy, he, 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 he tricked the woman, and um, remember he's accusatory. He accused God of withholding something from her that enticed her. All right, and he started out with questions. So you gotta watch out how the enemy comes at you. He'll start out with a question. He'll make you question. Mm -hmm. Was Pastor Quinn talking about me tonight? Uh, that's what he said. Uh, that's how he starts. That's that's the question that he puts in your mind. You follow me? So let's drop down then. I want to drop down then to to verse uh, fourteen. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, uh -huh. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, because the enemy had, had tricked Eve, mm -hmm. did that wickedness to her, God, 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 God cursed him. He's already cursed, but now he's doubly cursed. So the enemy knows that he's a cursed individual and he has nothing to lose. So that makes him more dangerous. That makes him more dangerous. Follow me? He knows his place. He knows he's going to be one day cast into the abyss, the lake of fire. Uh, he knows that. So, so he, he is more dangerous now. Because of that knowledge. So he literally wants to destroy everything that he can get his hands on. That he can influence. Everything. That's what makes him more treacherous. Because he's out to destroy everything that he can get his hands on. That he can influence. So he's, he's, he's superly uh, 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 deceitful. Because he doesn't care. He has no hope. He doesn't care. All right? So notice what he said. Read that verse again. Hallelujah. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, mm -hmm. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, uh -huh. and above every beast of the field. Yes. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, mm -hmm. and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. All right? Verse 15 is what we want. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Yes. And between thy seed and her seed. Yes. It shall bruise thy head, mm -hmm. and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now notice, this scripture here, it, it tells us uh, where the war started. It's where the war started between us and the enemy. He's speaking here, this is a prophecy literally about Jesus. But it's also a prophecy about us and the fight that we have with the enemy. Notice what it says. Read that again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. All right. Now, enmity, it means hostility, friction. Uh, it means active opposition. Active opposition. Friction. Hostility. Active opposition. It means uh, 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 that 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 he's going to attack us, and he's always hostile toward us, and it's friction. But remember, uh, the enemy is not going to come at you in a hostile way. He's not going to come at you uh, jumping up in your face. Why? Because he's more subtle yeah. than that. Yeah. He's crafty. Mm -hmm. He's tricky. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. 
So he'll, he'll do the end game. You follow me? He'll come around through the back door uh, instead of the front door. He'll come in the back door. He'll, 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 he'll swoon you. He'll gain your confidence first. The enemy has goods. He tried to offer Jesus his goods. If you would bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of this. That's a trick. That's a trick. He's crafty like that. He's bling bling. He, his angels, he is transformed into also angels of light. The enemy knows the truth, so he'll mingle truth with lies. Yeah. Crafty. Mm -hmm. Slick. Mm -hmm. Cunning. You follow? Mm -hmm. and, and, and we ourselves, in our human form, are no opponent for him. Because he's, he, he has advantages over us. I can't defeat the enemy in my own strength, in my own power, because he's too crafty. He's too good at what he does. That's why I got to put on God's arm. You follow me? All right. Now, notice what it says. Read that again, Pastor. Hallelujah. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, uh -huh. and between thy seed and her seed, yes. it shall bruise thy head, uh -huh. and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now notice, notice, notice. I, I want that latter part of that. It says, it shall bruise thy head. Now, once again, this is a reference uh, to, to the Messiah, to Jesus. But I'm using it tonight as a reference to you and I, because we're in the same battle. We're in the same fight. For this cause, Christ came into the world because we were in a battle, we were in a fight, and we, without Christ, we would lose. So notice, he said, he said, uh, and the serp, uh, what verse is that? It shall bruise thy head, uh -huh. and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now notice, we should be uh, actively trying to bruise the head of Satan. You follow me? That's what we should actively be doing because we're in warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness where? In high places. And notice, wrestle means hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, and, and when you're wrestling, the opponent is trying to get an advantage over you. And sometimes he will get an advantage over you. Notice, he'll, we shall bruise his head, but he's going to do what? Bruise our heel. So we're going to get some bruising from the enemy as well. Follow me? There's going to be some pain that the enemy is going to inflict on us as well. So it's a hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's a fight. And you've got to realize that the only way that you can win the fight is by putting on God's armor so that you can survive his bruising. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. uh, Mother Louise? What would be the bruising like? If, if, what the bruising is, if we don't submit. Right. When we, when we give in to the temptation of the enemy, that's the bruising. You get a bruising when you submit to the temptation that the enemy offers you. That's that bruising. But now, the bruising that he gives, anytime you get a bruise, you can heal from it. You have an opportunity to heal. But if you, if you don't uh, 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 take the medicine, if you don't uh, allow it to heal, you could die from it. You can die from it. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. So, so notice, read that verse again then. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, uh -huh. and between thy seed and her seed. Yes. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So are we in agreement then that we are in a warfare? Amen. 
And the origin of it is started in the book of Genesis. And, and, and God has allowed uh, it to happen. And he has given the enemy an opportunity or, or, or a, a leeway, if you will, to bruise us, to tempt us. Huh? When, when, when he was dealing with Job, he asked the devil, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to and fro. Have you considered my servant, Job? See, he's giving them that access. So it got, God, God is allowing the fight to happen. But the only way to survive the fight, you've got to put on God's armor. Some may say, well, God, is that fair? Yes, it's fair. Because he's supplying you with what you need to overcome the enemy. And God uses the enemy for his glory, for his purpose. You follow me? And God won't allow the enemy to put on no more on you than you can bear. And with everything that comes at you, he's already made a, a way of escape. God is fair. God is just. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's, let's look then. Let's go over then to 2 Corinthians then. Uh, chapter uh, number, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Second Corinthians chapter number 10. And I want to start out with verse number 3. Help me here, Holy Ghost. For though we walk in the flesh, uh -huh. we do not war again after the flesh. Now notice, Paul is saying, though we live in these fleshly bodies, that, that's what he's referring to, walking in the flesh. Though we live in these fleshly bodies, we do not war in fleshly ways. We do not war in fleshly ways. And, and he's connecting this to that armor of God, that whole armor of God. It's not fleshly. Y'all with me? So, so though I'm in this flesh, in order for me to get an advantage over the enemy, I've got to fight a spiritual way. God's way. I can't fight a carnal way. Man's way. All right, read. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh huh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Yes. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, I want you to get this definition in your mind about weapons. Because this is key. This is key. This means something. When we're talking about weapons, this definition. Weapons are, are, are means of gaining an advantage or defeating the enemy in conflict. Weapons are means, which are supplied by God, of gaining an advantage. or defending oneself in conflict. The reason why God had given us that definition is because you can't kill the devil, but you have to gain and maintain an advantage over him because he's trying to get an advantage over you to kill you, to destroy you, Look at it. You can't kill him, but he can kill you. He can't kill you if you remain in Christ. If you get out of Christ, he can kill you. His mission is to kill, steal, and to destroy. 
But how does he kill you? He puts suggestions in your mind. He can't strangle you. He can't choke you. But he can, he, he's subtle. He uses influence. He uses trickery. Some people with schizophrenia, they're paranoid. They see things. Uh, and they believe what they see. It's called delusions. The enemy will feed you delusions to make you believe a lie. That's how he gets you. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. So, 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 so in essence, you got to keep your mind delivered at all times, which is called the helmet of salvation. Got to keep your mind delivered at all times. Amen? And, and, and don't allow the enemy to uh, uh, bring about strongholds in your mind, imagination. That's how he gets you. He can't choke you. He can't punch you. Huh? He can't stab you. Right, that's, that's possession. That's true. That's possession. That's possession. These mass shootings that you see, that's possession. Huh? People walking up in Walmart, shooting everything running. Possession. That's, that's influenced by the devil. That's not God. That's not, that's not that individual. That individual is possessed by the devil. Possession is real. Possession. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now, um, what verse we in, Pastor? Four. All right. Read. What does it say? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Thank you. So when we're looking at weapons, the definition of weapons then are uh, a means of gaining an advantage or defending oneself in conflict. The, the reason why God gives you weapons is so that you would be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil because you can't do it on your own and also to, to resist him so that you can get an advantage over him. That's the reason why we got to put on these weapons or these weapons that God has given us. And if we don't get it on, we won't be able to to stand or resist him when he brings about his wiles. And then we won't be able to fight to advance against him when he comes. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. I got a verse in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, uh, verse 9. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon to Samuel. He said, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. So when the Spirit of the Lord came on, upon Samuel, he became a new person, because he was Absolutely. possessed with that Spirit of the Lord. Yes, yes. And notice, it came upon him. He got it on. You follow me? Thank you, Jesus. He got it on. He was dressed, ready to prophesy to become that other person, to wage warfare. Samuel was a bad man. Uh, 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 they feared when Samuel came in the room. Uh, when he came about, they was like, who going to die now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? Because he was walking in his mantle. He was walking in his armor. You follow me? The enemy couldn't get an advantage over him. Hallelujah. All right. All right. All right. What verse are you in, Pastor Doug? Five. All right, read that. No, read four again. Four. Yes. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh -huh. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All right, now, 
out, we dis, we define weapons. Okay? And then he says, the weapons of our warfare. Warfare. I want to define warfare now. The weapons are the means by which we gain an advantage over the enemy uh, uh, through uh, conflict and battle. The, the warfare then refers to the activities that uh, uh, are used to engage in the conflict. The activities, that's warfare. The activities that, that, that is gained in getting that advantage. The difference is, is the weapons are was what is used. The warfare is the strategy that's used. When he said that the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. carnal. Our strategies are not carnal. We don't use strat uh, carnal strategies. Now, uh, uh, the Bible doesn't... Uh, it, insinu it, it insinuates it. I don't want to say the word insinuate. It insinuates. The enemy has schemes, doesn't he? Yeah. God has schemes. <laughs> huh? Right. We, the Bible don't use the word schemes. But, but it is. It's, it's, it's strategies. Yeah. If, you, if you, you know, we oftentimes put a negative connotation to the word scheme. But it's, it, it comes from a root of strategy. Plan. Plan. Yeah. <laughs> he likes that better. Absolutely. Not of evil. Huh? But to bring you where? God got an expected end for us. He's got plans. Uh, and, and within those plans, he has ways, strategies for which we ought to use to gain the advantage. If we don't know the strategies that God has outlined, we will miss it. And the strategies is literally the armor. I'm getting excited. Thank you, Jesus. It's literally that armor. And if you aren't possessing the armor, then you're not fully dressed and ready to attack and defeat the enemy. Come on here, somebody. You follow me? That's the difference. And, and God says, you remember, uh, give you a strategy that God used. When the children of Israel, when they was coming across the Red Sea, they didn't know what to do. The enemy was attacking them. Yeah. What was the strategy? Stretch out your rod. He told, he told Moses, stretch that rod out, boy. Yeah, yeah. Huh? And then God, because he was obedient, using God's strategy, what does not make sense. How that, how that going to do help us? You follow me? But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're spiritual. Yes, yes. So it's not going to make sense. Mm -hmm. huh? But it's mighty. Yeah, yeah. Look at the result. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah. Look at the result. Mighty through God. Who's the other? Yeah. God. Mighty. Oh, yeah. huh? God parted that Red Sea. Allowed his people to go off on dry land. And then when the enemy is swayed to try to do it, he caused it to come back together. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. They killed more people then than they ever did. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Mighty through God. Yes. Huh? Doesn't make sense. Yes. And then when it came for them to, 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 to go over to the promised land, take the Canaanites, he told them, march around that wall. Yes, huh? One time a day for seven days. And then on the seventh day, do it seven times and then shout. Yeah. Huh? The strategy. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. No. 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 <laughs> God will tell you something that don't make sense. Yeah. Huh? But it's his strategy. It's his weapon. Yeah. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. It's warfare. Yeah. That kind of old shot. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, it's warfare. Doesn't make sense. When, when he told Gideon to go down and fight, Gideon had too many people. Look at God's strategy. That was God's strategy. And they had too many people. Had them drop down to 300 men. Huh? And, and, and then he told them to go in the battle and don't for, forget about your swords. Take some water pots. Huh? And then, and then crash them together. And say, and say, I forget what he told him to say, but the Lord of hosts, or something like that. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and Gideon. Hallelujah. That's God's strategy. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Huh? Doesn't make sense. No. But that's God's strategy. It's not carnal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. He does that so he can get the complete glory. Complete glory. Because you can't say I can get anything. Yes. Hallelujah. I had Nothing to do with it. I just did what God told me to do. Then so man. I have to give him his glory. I got to. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Got to give God his glory. Mm -hmm. And he operated like that in the New Testament. Uh, uh, Paul and Silas thrown in the jail. Yeah. Look at the strategy for them being loose. Yeah. One sang and the other prayed. Yeah. <laughs> and then God caused an earthquake. To... Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Look at God's strategy. Yeah. He loosed them but also gave them the mind to remain. Don't try to escape. Don't leave. Don't run away. I'm with you. Preach my gospel. Huh? The jailer wanted to commit suicide. Paul said, oh, don't kill yourself. We all here. We ain't going nowhere. That's the God's strategy of making you get involved. I ain't going nowhere. Get your family. Let's listen to this gospel and let's get them saved. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's God's strategy. Yeah. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Tides and offering. Mm -hmm. God's strategy for being blessed. Y'all with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, somebody sick, call for the elders. Mm -hmm. God's strategy mm -hmm. for being healed. Mm -hmm. God has strategies. Yes. And it's not common. Mm -hmm. But mighty through God. Through the pulling down uh, of every stronghold. So when we think about then warfare, think about, okay, I'm, I'm in a fight. What's my strategy for coming up out of this? <laughs> uh, that's what you got to think. What weapons do I use huh, that's, that, 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 is, that is given unto me? And then what's the strategy? What's, what's the strategy for me to come up out of this? That's what you got to be thinking. Especially if the enemy has gotten advantage over you. It's not over. Huh? It's not over. We still in it. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah! I still got breath. I still got hope. I still got God. Uh, if God be for me, uh, who then can be against me? What's the strategy? For, 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 for flipping it, getting an advantage over the enemy. Yeah. That's how you gotta think about weapons and warfare. Mm -hmm. The weapons are what you use, the warfare is how you use it. Yeah. And that is the armor of God. Y'all with me? Amen. Hallelujah, my God. All right, uh, read that again, Pastor. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh -huh. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, now the weapons of your warfare are what? Not carnal. Not carnal, but what? Mighty through, mighty through God. You gotta remember that. That's true. What, what God gives you as a strategy is mighty. Amen? It's mighty. And it's empowered by God. Right? To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Strongholds are embedded, uh, fortified opinions that the enemy puts in our mind. <laughs> the enemy is a deceiver. He's a liar. And you can't, uh, 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 if you start to believe his lies, which we all are susceptible to, because he's shrewd like that. The enemy doesn't come to you and, I am the devil. Uh, fear me. 
Uh, he don't do that. He speaks to you, you in your own voice. Uh, and, and he does it. He gets the advantage over us through repetition. You ever see advertisements? Huh? That uh, they, they uh, especially like through your email. Huh? I get, I, I couldn't tell you how many uh, emails I get from Amazon huh? on a daily basis. They always send me something. Huh? They always send me something. I delete, delete, delete. But one day they'll catch me when, uh, when you know, when an enticement. Huh? When I'm weak. Huh? That's what they're looking for. Huh? To catch you when you're weak. When you're vulnerable. Huh? And then you put, okay, fine. Ooh, why not do that? I know I ain't got that money. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it does. That's how the enemy does. He comes at you. He keeps coming at you. Huh? To kind of catch you when you're weak. When you're vulnerable. When you ain't thinking. Yeah. How many times you did something and not think, man, why'd I do that? I wasn't thinking. The enemy. You follow me? That's how he works. He's susceptible like that. Yeah. You got to be careful. Amen? Watch and pray. <laughs> All right? Now, okay? Now, notice. So, so, so when he gets that advantage in your mind, you got to pull down that stronghold by using God's weapons. You got to use it. And remember, uh, uh, using God's weapons are his strategies. What God offers, what he puts forth, that's what makes them mighty. They're authored by God. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how foolish it is, how stupid you look. If God said, I'm going to heal you of cancer. I want you to stand on the corner and go like this. Huh? That's the strategy. Just hold out your hand and, and be like a little bird and, and, and do that. I'm going to heal you. Huh? Thank you, Lord. That's God's strategy for your healing. And what should you do? Do it. Do it. Get healed. Look at Naaman. Naaman, he was a warrior. Huh? He was he was bound by leprosy. Yeah. And, and he went, he had a little slave girl, and I love that story. Yeah. Even though that slave girl was a slave, she still helped her master. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, and helped him and told him, hey, there's a man in Israel huh, that's able to, to bless you and to recover you. Yeah. Huh? So Naaman went to uh, the prophet uh, Elisha, amen, to get healed. And Elisha didn't even bother with him. Then I told him, just, just go down and dip seven times in the Jordan. And you're going to be healed. Yeah. That was the strategy. Yeah. Huh? And Naaman, he had a lot of pride. Mm -hmm. See, now his flesh rising up. Yeah. Huh? That's what happens when God gives us the strategy. And for deliverance, our flesh will rise up. Yeah. Huh? Then we need somebody to talk to us like the little girl. <laughs> huh? Huh? Say that. If God, if, if he'd have told you to go do some great thing, uh, conquer some great people, you wouldn't have no problem with it. But all he's telling you to do is go dip in the wind in that water. Yeah. So he humbled himself. Dip seven times, and the Bible said his skin was like baby skin. Amen. Recovered. Smooth. Amen? Why? Because he followed the strategy of God. He got delivered. When we follow the strategy of God, we'll get delivered. Yes. It may look foolish, but you'll be delivered. Yes. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And, and like that stuff said, if God does it that way so he can get the glory. The foolishness of, of, uh, of, of God is wiser than man. And God takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That's God's strategy. Yes. That's his plan. Y'all with me? Yes. Hallelujah. My God, my God. This is good stuff here. All right. Read what's it said? What verse did? Five. Five? Casting down imagination. Casting down imagination. And every high thing uh -huh. that exalted itself against the knowledge of God uh -huh. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. All right, now, your mission and your goal to use God's weapons is to bring every thought
thought to the obedience of Christ. That's your goal. Have the mind of Christ. Have the spirit of Christ. And you've got to bring all of your thoughts. Listen how he said it. Every thought. So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you say you like Jesus, that means you think like Jesus. Amen? You don't, you, don't, you don't care around your own thoughts. You bring them into subjection to the obedience of Christ. And then when you do that, it activates God's deliverance. That's his strategy. If you don't like it, you got to go and argue with God. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> That's what my nephew said one day. I was trying to sell those a bad house. He said, well, good luck with that. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You can't change God's strategy. No. If you want to live, you got to live within it. Mm -hmm. Now notice. He said, for the pulling down of strongholds, read Casting down imaginations uh -huh. and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God uh -huh. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, when he's talking about every high thing, you've got to look at every high thing as, as breaking God's commandments that says, Thou shalt not have any other God before me. A high thing is a God. Huh? And your thoughts can be a God unto you because you submit and obey them. Can it be a person too? Absolutely it can be a person. 100%. But, we're, but he's talking about imaginations here. And, and your thoughts that don't submit to the word of God and you obey those high thoughts that you have, you make them a God above God. Thou shalt not have any other God before me. That's what a high thing is. A high thing is, when the Bible talks about a high thing, it's talking about a place of worship. You know, I was so disappointed in Israel uh, some years ago when I found out because I used to that thought that when they came out of the wilderness that they was worshiping God exclusively. I'm talking about this some years ago before I, uh, 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 I gained the full knowledge of the Bible in my process in searching the Bible, coming across this knowledge. And when I found out that, that, that they even in they had the ark, they had the tent, but still, they had served idol gods. They had a, a, a I would call them high places. Huh? So they, they would literally uh, uh, worship God and then turn around and go to this high place and worship it. Oh, I was angry. Like, that's dumb. But people do that. That's what the Bible says, having a form of godliness. Yeah. Huh? But denying the power thereof. They, they, they had a form that they was worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Huh? But they denied his power and, and, and served these other gods. High things. God told them, take down those high places. We've got to take down the high places in our mind that don't submit to God. I'm teaching you tonight. Tell all that stuff. Huh? I can't. Can God? Will God? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not cute enough. <laughs> I'm not smart enough. I'm too black. My head too nappy. Huh? Stuff like that. 
I'm paranoid. They ain't going to like me. That's a hard thing. You remember? Y'all remember uh, uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah. When, when they was uh, sent off to preach the word, one said, I'm too young. Huh? I can't do it. God said, who told you that? Huh? Then God helped him. Use the name. He took a took to have one of them uh, uh, angels come and put flame in it on his mouth. Cleaned him up. Huh? Moses, high thing in his mind. Huh? I got a stutter. I'm, I got a stammer. Huh? They're not going to believe me. High thing. You follow? Putting it above God. You can't allow your thoughts to go above God. And that's, that's like, that's like putting God, putting your thoughts before God, you worship those thoughts because whatever you yield your members to obey, that's whose servant you are to whom you obey. Yes, sir. You can't obey those wicked thoughts. High things. Bring, casting down imagination and every high thing that what? Now, 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 this shows you that it's it's a you, it's a worship because it's exalted. You follow me? Exalted above what? The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. It's exalted. Mm -hmm. Anything that you exalt above God has become a false god. Mm -hmm. Don't allow your thoughts to become false gods unto you. I, I was going to say that uh, doubt is something that comes across everybody. Even John the Baptist, he was born with the Holy Ghost. And even him got to a point where he said, well, I don't know, is he him or what? You know, doubt, if he was born with the Holy Ghost and might have having doubt, we're going to have doubt too. And we're going to have to... Uh, Notice, notice, notice what it says. Casting down. Mm -hmm. Casting down. So it's going to come, but you got to cast it down. Mm -hmm. Fear is going to come, you got to cast it down. Mm -hmm. Doubt is going to come, you got to cast it down. Mm -hmm. You get all kinds of thoughts, Bishop. Mm -hmm. You have to say, I rebuke that thought. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. You get all kinds of weird thoughts. All kinds. Mm -hmm. You have to bring your mind back into the subjection of the word of God. <laughs> that's, that's good, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Don't you like the sound of that? <laughs> what are you doing, Pastor? I'm bringing my thoughts into subjection. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me of brother. I forget that brother's name. He said, he, we was, we was, Saints was going to go bowling. He said, no, I don't want to go bowling tonight. I don't want to be carnal. <laughs> so he was, Dexter. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Dexter. That's it. He said, no, I'm bringing my thoughts into subjection. <laughs> I ain't got wrong with going bowling. Don't get me wrong. But, but something was in his mind that was fighting. Huh? And he wanted to be in battle. Hallelujah. You got to bring stuff. You know, uh, saints used to love fasting. What do you do? Oh, I'm crucifying my flesh. I love it. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. They were so excited when they said, don't touch the unclean thing. They ain't going to touch nothing dirty. <laughs> don't, don't, don't touch the unclean thing. Thank you. Y'all with me? So, so when it comes down to spiritual battle and spiritual warfare and casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, you should say, game on. That's what you should say. Game on. Yeah, let's get ready. Rumble, young man, rumble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. Where we at, Pastor? Is that it? Oh, go ahead. Finish that up. Read it again. No. Six. Uh-huh. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience.
obedience. Uh -huh. When your obedience is fulfilled. Now notice, God is ready to avenge all disobedience uh, when you're what? Obedience is fulfilled. When you submit your thoughts to God, when that is fulfilled, God will fight for you. God will fight for you. You with me? In order for this armor to work, you've got to be totally submitted. Got to be totally submitted. In every area of it, you've got to be totally submitted. Because if you don't, you, you open a gateway. Amen? Um, the also, it says, revenge all disobedience. Once you become obedient and you do whatever the Lord told you to do, the devil will remind you when you didn't do it. Absolutely. That's, that's his job, man. Huh? He, that's what makes him accuser of the brethren. So then, you do what Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind, because you got some knowledge. It's been washed in the blood. Amen? And that is it's in the sea forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west, God has parted my sin that it will never uh, uh, regain or come back to me. Amen? Amen. Uh, hallelujah. East and west are eternal coordinates. They never meet up again. But if you go uh, north and south, uh, they'll meet up again. Thank you, Lord. So that's why he says east and west are part of your sin from one another. When you realize that, then when uh, the serpent comes, the accuser comes, he said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> get thee behind me. That's coming under the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. In fact, you can walk off and not ignore him totally. That'd be better. Because <laughs> you don't want to engage in a conversation with him. Yeah, he's shrewd. Yeah. Yeah. Get your attention. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he liked that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Just move on. Yeah. Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. I was going to say, because he'll keep the devil shrewd enough to keep messing around with you until he finds that weak spot. That weak spot. And you don't realize he's there, and next thing you know, he got you. He got you. He got you. And he always throwing your past at you. Even though your past has been covered under the blood, he still, he still bring it up all the time. Trying to get you. And then you start thinking about it, that brings down your mood. And your mood controls your behavior, your actions. You wake up all excited about going to church. Ooh, I'm going to church. I'm going to praise my God. Then he'll bring up something negative. And then you get to thinking about that. Man, I don't even know how to go. <laughs> Start taking off your clothes. <laughs> Thank you. That's the way he is. That's his strategy. Right? And how do you combat that? You resist the devil. That's God's strategy. Steadfast. Right? You, 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 you change the thought process. You think on things that are lovely, that are honest, that are true, right? Huh? If there be any praise in it, huh? any virtue in it, that's how you change the narrative. And that's how, my God, that's how you're bringing that thought into captivity. Father, mm -hmm. by using God's weapons of warfare, warfare strategy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have, you have to wait like Daniel, three weeks and stuff. Sometimes it might not come when you want to. You just have to wait. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Mm -hmm. You working with us or against us? Got to be patient. Got to wait on the Lord. 
And while you're waiting on the Lord, what did he tell you? Be a what? Be a what? That's the strategy. You follow? You got to think about, I'm in this warfare. I'm waiting on God. What's the strategy? What's the truth? What's the strategy? That's the strategy. And will not tarry. Encourage yourself in the Lord. <coughs> huh? Uh, there's one scripture I often uh, want to preach it and quote it, but it never really come to me. Commune with your own heart. Commune with your own heart. And, but that scripture that say, ah, uh, Jesus. Now, nah, it's going to come to me later. But it talks about patience. Yeah. And your patience possess you, your soul. But, but uh, we, we kind of quote it out of context uh, when we do quote it. Ah, uh, my God. All right, it'll come. Lord, Lord, help me. <laughs> All right, let's finish it up. What's the second part? That's it on that, isn't it? Yes. Okay, now, let's go then. Let's go uh, to this army. That's in Ephesians chapter number six. And I want to begin. Uh, with verse number 10. Above all, uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter Ephesians number 6. 10. I, I was at 16. I was Thank 16. you. All right. Finally, my brethren. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Now, what it's referring to about being strong uh, is about putting on this whole armor. That's what's going to cause you to be strong. Strong in the Lord. Being in an empire and, and the power of his might mean being empowered by him. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah, be empowered by him. Read. Put on the whole arm of God uh -huh. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now notice what he says. He says, put on the whole arm. So it's literally something you've got to do. Amen? You've got to do this. And it's, it's necessary for you to do it to be able to engage in warfare. Jesus had to do it. Father, let's go over. Let's go over to, to, to uh, Isaiah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Mother Louise, you had your hand up? Yeah, I was, it says, it tells us, God tells us to put it on. Yes. But at the same time, wouldn't it be wise to ask God how to teach us, to teach us how to put it on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, a lot of times we <laughs> get dressed and might miss a piece. Yeah. But if God dresses us, which is his army, He's going he's, he's gonna to see to us getting every piece and every part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if we pray and ask God to show us and to teach us how to wear his, his armor, uh -huh. you know, then we'll know, that one we'll know how to use it yes. to his glory and, and, and to our benefit. Yes. So uh, I was thinking on that while, you know, we can, God tell us to do things. But at the same time, we have to turn around and ask him, how do we do this? Yes. So, because you can't just go and get the word and, and, and impart it in you or put it in you. Mm -hmm. You got to ask God to do that for you. Yes, to help you. Yeah, to help you do that. But the thing is, you have to, like you teach us, we have to have the intent. Yes. We will have to want to put it on. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If you just... Uh, Hitting and miss, you know, you're just praying and asking God, what is that? And, and, and asking the miss, then God is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. But if you're sincere about putting it on, then God will teach you. He'll show you how to put it on. When the time comes, then you'll know how to use it. Absolutely. And that's what this Bible study is about mm -hmm. to teach how to put it on and what it is. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, you know, I hate, can I be honest? Uh -huh. Some of this class is just going over somebody's head. They're like, oh, you guys are just teach it. Some people saying, oh, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. And I'm going to suck it all up like a sponge and apply it to my life. Which 
one are you? You follow? Those that see the need and the necessity, they're going to they gonna, they gonna suck it up like a sponge. But those that, well, I'm just here in Bible class. Ah, it's going right over the edge. Brother Oliver, uh, I love Brother Oliver. He said, he said one time, he was in Bible study, Bishop! He, Bishop, Brother Oliver. He said, I, 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 I seen in a vision uh, that this word was, was going in some people, but in other people it was going over their head. Huh? That was a warning from God. I hope this word isn't going over your head that you're receiving. Receive with meekness the engrafted word of God so you can grow thereby. Sister Jack? Um, you know, sometimes um, we'll be thinking that it's somebody else that needs to get it. Woo! You know, when yeah. it's really me. Yes. You know? So I want to be the sponge. I want to suck it up. Suck it up. Suck it up. Yes. Suck it up. Not sit here and be like, oh, well, you know, Brother Sam told me to suck it up or Sister Sam. Yes. <laughs> but I know, you know, that I need to suck it up. Whenever we have Bible study, yes. Yes. To allow that word to fall on us. Fall on us. So we can do what it is that God. Right. You know, we all can grow. Yes. We all can grow. Absolutely. And I've done that before. I've been hearing messages, and you know, I'm receiving it. Then I say, ooh, I, ooh, so and so needed to be here to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. Thank you, Jesus. You want that needed to hear and heard it. <laughs> Amen. I like it. All right. So Isaiah. Chapter number 11. I said 10, but I meant 11. All right? And we're talking here about Jesus putting it on. Isaiah chapter 10, because this, this concept that Paul uses, he didn't just make that up. It was inspired by the scriptures about putting it on. Isaiah chapter number 10, 11, and drop down to uh, uh, verse number five. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, uh -huh. and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now, now when you think about the armor of God, gird your loins with truth. You follow me? And this scripture here is talking about Jesus. And it's talking about him going into battle for the people of, of, of the world, our soul. And if Jesus had to put on uh, uh, the weapons of warfare, ought not we to put on the weapons of warfare? Jesus said that we ought to follow his example. Amen? Amen? Now, if Jesus had to put on that weapon of, of, of righteousness, are we not to put on the weapons of righteousness? Yes. Do we need that? Yeah. Read that, Pastor, again. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, uh -huh. and faithfulness the girdle of his reign. Amen. He, so so he, uh, part of that armor that Jesus used is the same armor that is rec uh, recommended to us. Righteousness and faith. If you're going to come up against the devil and do the will of God, you've got to put on some righteousness and faith. Let's get it on. Got to put it on. The scripture you talking about, it says, And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends, and some of you shall they call to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your soul. In your patience possess what? Ye your soul. Ye your soul. That's truth, isn't it? So when I'm patient, I'm possessing what? My soul. Isn't the enemy after your soul? That soul that sinneth, it shall die. 
Thank you, Deacon Phil. All right. Read that again. Read that. Uh, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. Uh -huh. And faithfulness the girdle of his reins. All right. Now, go over now to uh, Isaiah 61. Very familiar passage of scripture. And I want you to start reading in verse number one. We're talking about putting on this armor. And what I want you to get out of these scriptures is, is that Jesus put on that armor. When he realized, I don't want to say he realized, that's a bad way to say it. But when, when he engaged in warfare, he put it on. He put on the armor. When you're engaging in warfare against the enemy, it's dumb for you to try to fight the devil without the armor, without their naked. You go into a gunfight, ain't even got a gun. No bullets, no gun, no nothing. You just dead. Huh? Ain't that dumb? Yeah. <laughs> That's dumb. All right, all right, all right. Read, Pastor, start with verse number one. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, this, this is a prophecy concerning Jesus. Read. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Uh huh. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and, to, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Now, when you say that's the mission of Jesus, didn't Jesus quote this? Huh? When, when he went into the temple and he quoted, he quoted this, he said, now this is fulfilled in your eyes, and he sat down and began to teach. Y'all remember that? Huh? This is fulfilled in your ears. He sat down and he began to teach. This is Jesus' mission. Amen? So, so then, um, uh, drop down now to verse number 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Uh -huh. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Uh -huh. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. Now notice, notice, for him to accomplish this, he was clothed with what? The garments of salvation. The garments of salvation. Paul uses it as armor. Here it is referred to garments of salvation. Jesus uh, 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 studied that word, if you allow me to say it that way, uh, got that word that dealt with salvation as he waged war against the enemy. Let's get it on. He knew about salvation. And he wore it as a garment, clothing, as a mantle. Right? All right, read he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. Uh-huh. Now notice, there it is. Salvation and righteousness. Read. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments. Uh-huh. And as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. With her jewels. And that, that, that bridegroom represents a priest. Huh? Uh, and his ornaments and his gear. Ready to offer up praise and sacrifice unto God. Your praise and your sacrifice unto God is a part of your warfare. Yes. Y'all with me? Alright. Um, um, let's, let's go back over to, to, to Ephesians. Yes. Oh, Jesus. I ain't where I want to be. <laughs> Alright. Ephesians chapter number 6. Yes. Finally, my brethren, uh -huh. be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. All right, now he tells you to put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that's the purpose of the armor. So that you can be able to stand, to protect yourself. So that you can withstand his attacks and be able to stand or advance even though the attacks are going on. 
and she won't stop fighting. I read. Well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. All right, so we wrestle not. That's that hand-to-hand -hand combat. Somebody's looking to get advantage. You can't kill the devil. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but what? But against principalities. Uh-huh. Against powers. Yes. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. Uh-huh. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Read. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Now notice, he says, take it. I can give something to you, but you don't have to take it. But God says, take it. Take unto you what? The whole armor of whole God. Whole armor of God. Amen? Take unto you all of his weapons. Read. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Huh? Because the evil days are coming. And, and, and God wants you to survive them. Read. And having done all to stand. Uh-huh. Stand therefore. Yes. Having your loins girt about with truth. Go. All right. Now, now, this armor consists of truth. Read. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. This armor consists of righteousness. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This armor consists of gos the gospel of peace. Read. Above all, taking the shield of faith. This armor consists of faith. Read. Wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of this wicked. Uh-huh. Of the wicked. Yes. And take the helmet of salvation. It consists of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit. Uh huh. Which is the Word of God. And it consists of the Word of God. And one more to complete it. It's seven. Read. That was seven. And take nope. the helmet of salvation. Uh huh. Pray yeah. And the sword of the Spirit, uh -huh. which is the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Praying always. There it is. All that's, in the spirit. that's the seventh. That's the seventh one. Prayer is the seventh one that's a part of that armor. There's seven pieces to that armor. The first three pieces of that armor are, are, are styled as clothing, which is to be worn all the time. The, 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 uh, Next three pieces of that armor are, are styled as, as weapons that you pick up when you're engaged in battle. And prayer is, is, is what you use at, 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 at different intervals because there are different types of prayer at all times. <laughs> There's some good stuff here. There's some good stuff. There's some good stuff. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So, so you should have truth all the time. Wear it like a garment. You should have righteousness at all times. Wear it as a garment. And you should have this gospel at all times to be worn as a garment. When the enemy attacks you, you don't pick up a gun, you pick up faith. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Huh? Oh, I forgot your shoes. Your shoes are to be worn. Oh, I did say that. The gospel. Yeah, thank you. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost helping me. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but when you're in a fight, you pick up faith. Huh? You get your sword. Am I right? Huh? And and you put on your helmet because you you fight now. You're in a fight mode. You need that. And then you then you use the types of prayer that you need. Can y'all give me just about five more minutes, ten more minutes? Uh, then I'll be done. Because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna now I wanna I wanna move to talk about that first that first weapon. True. Y'all with me? Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. What did he say again, Pastor, about truth? And Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, 
Uh huh. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right. Now he's saying, have your loins girt about with what? Truth. 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 All right. Now he's saying, wear truth like a, a, I, I call it a, a belt or a duty belt. Uh, truth is meant to hold everything in place. What's holding all this armor in place is truth. Huh? Specifically, the truth about Jesus and the truth that Jesus taught. It holds everything in place. When you think of a duty belt, uh, think about like a carpenter. Huh? A carpenter, they wear a belt. And in that belt, they got a hammer, they got screws, they got nails, huh? Everything they know to get the job done. And what holds all that in place is the belt. When, when you think about a police officer, they, they have a belt on, they strap it on, huh? They got the gun, they got the taser, they got the handcuffs, they got the mace, huh? And whatever else, huh? And they, and they, that's used in warfare. You follow? Uh, and, and you think of uh, people who are actually in, our, in, in, in an army. Uh, they have a belt. They got the poncho in it. They got the canteen in it. They got, they got first aid supplies in it. Uh, and, and whatever else. They got on the gas mask. Uh, and, that, and that belt holds everything in place. They got hand grenades and stuff. They got knives and stuff. <laughs> My God, I'm getting, I'm getting excited. <laughs> they, got, they got some stuff on the belts. You follow me? Sometimes uh, uh, them guards where I work at, they got a belt, and they, they take it off, and then they get called to a cold. They pick up their belt, they strap it in on. Uh, because you don't know what you're going to need uh, in that particular situation. And, and same way with truth. Truth is needed in every situation. And it holds the whole armor together. Y'all with me? Amen. Now, let's talk about truth just for a moment. All right? Uh, thank you, Lord. Y'all just bear with me. What time is it? Oh, seven Y'all give me five more minutes. All right. <laughs> All right. Go to St. John. St. John chapter 14 and 6. Truth represents all that Jesus taught. St. John 14 and 6. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. I am the way, uh -huh. the truth, and the life. All right. Read. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's true thing. No man can come unto the Father but by Jesus. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. Huh? Huh? And the life. Life represents a spiritual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. When you study Jesus, you get spiritual knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Huh? You get the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. All right. Go to St. John chapter 1 and verse 17. I want y'all to get these scriptures because I want them to be in your repertoire. Your repertoire is in your arsenal. Is your arsenal. All right? Uh, St. John 1 and 17. For the law was given by Moses. Now notice, the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. What came by Jesus? Grace and truth. Grace and truth. Jesus holds everything together. <laughs> it came by Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, go to St. John chapter number 8. Lord, I hate that I'm rushing through this. St. John chapter number 8, uh, and start with verse 31. And then, Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, uh -huh. if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Now that's true, thank you. Mm -hmm. If you continue in my word, then are you my what? Disciples. 
Disciple, if you don't continue, you are not my disciple. Uh, if you don't, if my word, my word, my teaching, my doctrine, the truth that I reveal, you got to continue in it. Read, what does it say? And you shall know the truth. Uh, now, now, if you continue in it, you go know the truth. <laughs> Read. And the truth shall make you free. Uh, and it shall do what? Make you free. And what verse is that? 32. All right, read. Then answer him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Uh-huh. Go drop down to verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. Now, know that if Jesus is making you free. You shall be free indeed. You shall be free indeed. Huh? And he frees you by truth. Yes, yes. His word, mm -hmm. his doctrine, mm -hmm. his teaching. Mm -hmm. If, notice what he says, if, mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? yes. if you follow after him, if is a, a conjunction that is, is, is conditional. Yeah. If you follow after, mm -hmm. if you walk in, the light, as he is in the light. Yes. You follow? Mm -hmm. You shall be free. Mm -hmm. All right? I, you want me to continue reading? No, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. I'll just tell you this so we can be move on. I don't want to keep it too long. Truth holds all the weapons in place. Think of truth as a duty belt. Apply it what is true and do not be deceived. See now, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I want to teach this thing. And, uh, amen. We'll pick up later. Amen. All right? All right. Y'all forgive the old pastor. I love this thing. And it's hard for me to let it go. <laughs> those scriptures again y'all will alright alright thank you alright amen alright yes yes we, no, that is. we thank God for everyone that has come today we want to give you opportunity to give through tithely uh, we want you to have that opportunity and be blessed we thank you for tuning in with us on today, and may heaven smile upon you, may God uh, bless you immensely, and I hope that this Bible study has helped you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.